Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our discussions, our discoveries, and our explorations with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2023. And that brings us to, well, actually, it is actually in the context of a very special collector set, a Blu-ray collector set from Criterion that I'd like to focus our attention today, if you don't mind. As some of you may know, we have been talking about the works that are contained in this phenomenal set, which is referred to as Pasolini 101. It is a multi-disc Blu-ray set containing a number of films directed by this one-of-a-kind filmmaker, artist, poet, critic, writer, who is Pier Paolo Pasolini. And so we have on this channel been speaking about each of the works, the feature-length works that are featured in this or that are collected in this set called Pasolini 101. And so I'd like to continue that conversation today, my dear friends, with a focus on the film that can be found on disc number 4, 004. And this is a work which is described as being from the year 1964, and it is directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini. And the name of the work is, and please pardon me for my very poor pronunciation of the Italian language. I hope you can forgive me. But it is called Il Vangelo Secondo Matteo, or as it's known in English, The Gospel According to Matthew. <music> This is the work, the extraordinary work, uh, from the writer and director Pier Paolo Pasolini. This is uh, based upon the Gospel of Matthew, and it has uh, the director of photography, uh, Tonino Delicolli, and among its fantastic cast, I mean, this is one of the fascinating aspects of this film, uh, the stylistic, cinematic uh, aesthetic of this film comes from many places, uh, a la the work of Pasolini, and one such place is the way in which this film is cast. And so among the people in this fascinating cast, we have Enrique uh, Irazoqui, who portrays Christ in this work, which is, and again, please pardon me for my very poor pronunciation of the Italian language, I hope you can forgive me, but it is uh, Il Vangelo Secondo Matteo, or, as it's known in English, the Gospel According to Matthew. And my goodness, what a, a powerful, uh, uh, really uh, exceptional work uh, from Pasolini, and a very interesting one in the context of his career. And again, for those who are following the career of Pasolini throughout the course of, say, the filmography in chronological order, shall we say, uh, say uh, using this box set, Pasolini 101, as one's guide, you will know that this falls, again, uh, in the period where he has made a number of films already, a number of feature films, as well as a number of, say, segment films, or, sh or what could be considered short films as well. And there have been a lot of, say, public uh, reactions uh, to such films. Uh, and in those films, uh, we have seen him handle and treat and address and perhaps even uh, tr uh, maybe counter or critique various aspects of spirituality and religion, uh, especially in the context of socio-political uh, context and also institutionalized religion. And we have seen this perhaps most vividly in a short work or a segment work, which is also included as part of the supplements in the earlier discs of this set, Pasolini 101. And I'm ref uh, referring to this uh, work, which is called La Ricotta, uh, which uh, as has been recounted in a number of places, including the essay or the booklet, which is right here uh, by James Quant, uh, received a really uh, public backlash and controversy for what it was perceived to have uh, handled or maybe mocked or ridiculed uh, certain aspects of uh, religious uh, uh, imagery and uh, maybe uh, institutionalized uh, religious iconography, especially surrounding uh, the events of and the uh, the uh, uh, the symbolism regarding uh, that of Christ 
And so uh, it seems very, not just curious, but also very perhaps apropos and incredibly, uh, incredibly powerful uh, to consider uh, the trajectory of Pasolini's career up to this point. And this is at the point where he makes gospel uh, according to Matthew. And when one watches this film, and uh, well, let's see if we can uh, take a step back and maybe approach this film in terms of the plot or story structure. And as the title suggests, this is purporting to be uh, based upon, or it's a uh, Pasolini and Company's cinematic, uh, cinematic representation or retelling in cinematic form of the events as portrayed in, or as depicted in, or as described in the Gospel of Matthew. And so in that way, this film can be described as being, uh, in many ways, a type of faithful a cinematic adaptation of the Gospel of Matthew, and thus we have a type of charting of the events of Christ based upon uh, the key events that are portrayed in the Gospel of Matthew. For example, uh, the uh, the birth of Christ, uh, the virgin birth, uh, and also uh, the teachings of Christ and uh, his various encounters with the key people and personages, uh, the apostles, and also uh, the teachings that are also uh, intertwined with or gathered with uh, aspects of, uh, of a uh, religious and spiritual philosophy that are also uh, encountered with uh, aspects of what are uh, oftentimes referred to or maybe uh, given the uh, description of uh, miracles or uh, the like, which are also given a very interesting and specific type of cinematic voice and styling in the context of Pasolini's work, The Gospel According to Matthew, and I'll speak about that a little bit later. Uh, but also other events as well, uh, up to uh, the um, uh, uh, up to the uh, crucifixion and then the resurrection, which are also depicted in a very fascinatingly stark and direct way. And I use those words on purpose because this leads us to another aspect of this film, which is very important, which is one can say that Pasolini uh, Pier Paolo Pasolini and company are applying aspects of, of various forms of, say, cinematic style and aesthetics that we have seen him and company address and indeed adopt throughout the course of his career up to now. And so we have seen, for, for instance, uh, his use or rejection, or perhaps a hybrid of the two forms, of what is known as Italian neorealism. This idea of, quote-unquote, trying to, in uh, for lack of a better phrase, trying to capture in cinematic tones a sense of realism, a sense of, of uh, suggesting something that is addressing uh, socio-political uh, terms uh, and concerns and issues. Uh, so in that way, it, it's trying to address using the cinematic form a type of uh, social-political realism uh, that has a currency of the moment. And uh, one way of trying to achieve this uh, quote-unquote social-political realism is by using non-professional actors and the idea or concept being that non-professional actors presence uh, might therefore be even more directly suggestive of the social political real or the social political currency of the moment and so we have here in this work a cast which can be said to be very much part of this type of tradition uh, we understand based on the uh, the academic sources and the history surrounding this film, including uh, many of the uh, points raised by the James Quant essay and other sources, that uh, the cast was made up of or, or um, it was non-professional actors, headed, of course, by uh, Enrique Erazokui, who portrays Christ. And this is also adding a, a great layer of cinematic uh, aesthetics of Pasolini, because in the application of this aspect of the use of non-professional actors, which could be said to be borrowing from the Italian neorealism tradition, Pasolini is also using his cinema to portray what might be said to be something of the humane and direct, while also maintaining a, a wonderfully, one might say, a brilliantly strict and faithful adherence to the biblical text of the gospel. And so what we have, therefore, is uh, this uh, way of, of portraying something that has a type of transcendental sense about it uh, when one is watching this, because you're feeling something that has uh, the... the um, that has uh, something very soulful and spiritual at its very core. Uh, because of the nature of the events that are being told, but also because of the way that the film is being expressed. And when I say this, this is one of the remarkable things about this film that's filled with so many remarkable points. The way it reaches the soulful point, the core, if you will, is by using or relying upon 
uh, the face, the, the, the visual aspects of the face, uh, close-ups on the faces. And the faces always register, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, there is a sense of, say, uh, maybe stillness in the face. Oftentimes there are events depicted or the knowledge of events that uh, maybe we or as viewers who may, uh, who may or may not have a background or knowledge base in the events of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, we might expect or know what is to come, knowing the story, knowing the tales or the events that are uh, happening here. And so uh, you juxtapose that with close-ups of visages, of faces that Pasolini and uh, Tondelicoli and others provide with the camera work and the design and the frames. And this forms a really fascinating juxtaposition with what we are, are witnessing in terms of our understanding of the religious or biblical text on the one hand, uh, and then something which gives us a direct sense, which is the face and looking right seemingly right at us, right at the uh, center of the screen on the other. So that juxtaposition of what one might say to be the transcendental or biblical text plus the directness and the earthiness and the, 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 um, the closeness of the face uh, creates this uh, wonderful counterbalance that I think gives the, uh, gives the film even more of an entry point. Uh, for us, the viewer, to enter and to ex uh, experience and to really live and relive. Uh, and so we, we are become part of the world in that way. And also, the way in which the events are told. I mean, there are aspects which could be said to be relying on, say, uh, maybe editing or, or maybe quote-unquote special effects that are meant to portray uh, what might, uh, what is oftentimes or what could be sometimes said to be um, uh, certain aspects of the events of Christ that are uh, uh, maybe some, uh, some circles described as being the miracles. And those have a certain uh, presence or representation in this film, of course. But at the same time, we have depictions of key events that are also shot or uh, portrayed head-on. And what I mean by this is there is a, a, a wonderful uh, down-to-earth uh, uh, sense of, uh, uh, I use the word earthiness, and, I, and there is a grit or dirt, or there is a feeling of the, the, uh, the haze in the air. There is something of the, uh, of the feeling of the now and the moment, and that's the way it's shot. It has a, shot, it has a way of almost being like a, I don't want to say a documentary, but maybe a quasi-documentary feel. Uh, elements are not, say, overproduced. There's no sense of sets or there's no sense of, say, uh, uh, maybe uh, stages and the like. This is at uh, outdoor locations and these are, are rugged settings and uh, they are also portraying, uh, uh, quote-unquote, uh, these real-life aspects that, are, again, could be said to be borrowing from the Italian neorealism tradition on the one hand, but also it could be said to be uh, a way in which uh, the cinematic aesthetics of this um, a type of, uh, um, uh, maybe, uh, the cinematically ascetic uh, aesthetics could be said to be uh, a key way in which uh, we are creating this direct connection, this really immediate, close, and direct connection between us, the viewer, and the, the stories and the events as portrayed by the Gospel of Matthew, as depicted in the Gospel according to Matthew in the hands of Pier, Pasolini, uh, Pier Paolo Pasolini. In other words, we are really uh, getting the sense of the immediacy of the uh, the life of Christ as depicted in this film, which I think is a very magical thing. It's a very beautiful thing. It's a very uh, cinematically powerful and magical thing indeed. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any distance between us and uh, the events of Christ as we see them uh, portrayed here. And that's due, I think, to these stylistic choices uh, that Pier Paolo Pasolini and company uh, provide to us. And so it has this almost... Um, it has a very, I don't want to say minimal, uh, stylistically minimalist quality, but uh, and I, but I, I maybe it, let me use that in a way, and I use that very positively to suggest that there is a, a starkness and a directness that serves the film immensely. And uh, its uh, maybe stylistic, quote-unquote, simplicity also serves the film immensely to, again, showcase the, uh, just the immediacy and directness of us, the viewers, with the story. And as well, uh, that directness then creates even more of a type of transcendental or emotional reaction in us as we are watching this. And that is also um, uh, encouraged further on by uh, the way in which music is applied, applied and used. Uh, there is also directness in this, a type of... Uh, of, 
um, a very uh, almost idiosyncratic choice of music. Sometimes certain classical pieces are used to great effect. Other times there's soul music that's used, blues music that blues music that's used, etc. That also has this way of maybe uh, not being. Uh, the quote-unquote uh, conventional choice for a type of, uh, of cinematic uh, expression or cinematic uh, retelling of a, a biblical story. Uh, but uh, the point is not this type of cinematic uh, uh, grandiose gesture on the part of Pasolini, but rather uh, using things that are, again, aiding us in or aiding the viewer or aiding the filmmaker in creating this close connection. And that close connection can be borrowing from many aspects of "quote unquote" real life, whether it be blues or or whether it be soul music, or whether it be actual locations, or whether it be the faces of these human beings who are portraying these uh, people as they are uh, in their uh, acting performances, etc. So, in this way, it's borrowing from the stylings of Italian neo Italian neorealism on the one hand, but then using it in a way that's also very much uh, uh, maybe uh, very uh, very much uh, a construct, but uh, despite the uh, the, uh, the sort of self awareness of uh, the, the constructed nature of this, there is still an immediacy, and that's the magic of uh, Pasolini's uh, uh, cinema, as displayed in this uh, really overwhelming work, uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. I mean, there are moments that are again they are shot in a way. There are moments that are shot in a way that are very almost almost shot in a type of uh, daily, day-to-day, -day, ordinary, mundane type of thing, or type of way, which is, again, part of the point of this, which is uh, that type of day-to-day, -day, daily uh, sense, or the daily grind, is where uh, the pain and sorrow, and where the triumph and the wisdom lie in the hands of uh, Pasolini. And we have seen this. This is a type of pattern, or, say, a theme, or handling of Pasolini's work, where uh, we go to uh, certain aspects of, say, the masses, or if we're thinking about uh, Pasolini's uh, depictions of social strata, social classes, uh, we see uh, depictions of, say, uh, the working classes uh, and the masses in, say, Akatone or Bamaroma, and uh, even love meetings, where we actually go into the crowds and, and get a sense of what the people think. Here, again, it's the same thing. We have a sense of, of of a film that is composed of quote unquote ordinary people. And this is also giving rise to this idea of, of creating the story, uh, the cinematic depiction of the events of Christ, again, uh, relying upon uh, the everyday, relying upon the ordinary or the mundane, because that's where the beauty lies, again, in the hands of Pasolini. And uh, that type of treatment and handling and respect. Uh, is uh, incredibly powerful indeed. This is another key aspect, one can say, of Pasolini's cin or, uh, cin um, filmography, at least up to now. Uh, it's been evident so far in the films that we have seen uh, featured in the, in the uh, Pasolini 101 set, uh, and it's certainly evident here in this uh, beautiful work, which is The Gospel According to Matthew. The Gospel According to Matthew is presented in this set, this Blu-ray set, the multi-disc Blu-ray set, which is Pasolini 101. It is 004. It's given, it's designated 004 within the context of this set. Uh, that corresponds to it falling on the fourth disc, the fourth Blu-ray disc. And this is, again, described as being from the year 1964. It's uh, and also at uh, 1.85 to 1. And according to the book, we have uh, information about the master. And uh, with regard to, on page 94, and with regard to the gospel according to Matthew, uh, it says, and I quote, This 4K restoration was undertaken by uh, Cineteca de Bologna uh, in collaboration with the Criterion Collection and Compass Film, at, Lim, uh, at Limagine, ritrovata from the 35mm original camera negative made available by uh, Studio Tine. A soundtrack a restoration was undertaken by the Criterion Collection from the 35mm sound negative. So, uh, this is a film which also uh, was released uh, several years back in a really great uh, Eureka Masters of Cinema uh, 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 release in the United Kingdom. So this was several years back, and in fact, uh, I have that, and I've relied on that uh, release whenever I revisited this film, The Gospel According to Matthew, and it's a really fine 
release. And in fact, prior to that, I remember first seeing this film in college, and it was on, I think it was a, sort of a VHS tape at the time, uh, and it was um, uh, the, I mean, maybe relative to now, uh, the quality was, again, VHS quality back in the day was still an amazing experience. It is an amazing experience, and it always has been an amazing experience uh, for me whenever I see it. Uh, and it's incredibly moving for the points that I've tried to raise earlier, and it still remains that way. There is, however, something very, very special about watching this film now in the context of this, uh, this restoration. And I've, I've seen this, uh, this Blu-ray disc here, uh, a number of times now, and I must say I am, uh, I find myself uh, incredibly impressed uh, with this. I mean, it is a digital restoration, and so uh, you know I do see, and I've maybe uh, pointed this out, uh, aspects of it that do uh, that I do recognize as having that quote unquote digital feel. Uh, again, for my lack of say technical expertise and my own subjective viewing experience, I would say that there there have been moments whenever I encounter say let's say a, a 4K UHD or 4K restoration on a 4K UHD, you can sometimes make out the grain, and it has a type of dot dot matrix type of pixelization effect that really is prominent in a lot of uh, in, uh, in some of the films that I see that have these 4k restorations and uh, but uh, it, it's never that pronounced at all whenever I see the gospel according to Matthew on this blu-ray uh, it it has a, a a roughness or as I mentioned before an earthiness that I think is very important uh, in terms of a psychological effect upon me I'm, I'm I'm trying to say that it's not meant to look uh, super crisp or super sharp, and uh, but uh, uh, it's meant to look a, a type of kind of rough quality to it on the one hand, but it's still uh, a beautiful image on the other. So that is one of the tricky balances, I would say, uh, that needs to be struck uh, in the art of restoration. And I'm in no way an expert when it comes to restoration. I'm j I'm on the consumer side of things, but. I would imagine that that striking a balance is a very difficult uh, line to to balance indeed. So, but when I see this, I feel that balance uh, achieved remarkably. I mean, it feels uh, well defined and well delineated as a 4K restoration uh, should feel on the one hand, but at the same time, it feels rough, and that roughness seems to be preserved quite effectively using the digital technology. So, and then the soundtrack, of course, the soundtrack is one of the key elements, in the, and it and it it has a flow that is uh, quite remarkable. So, I I am incredibly impressed uh, with this uh, uh, this release of the Gospel according to Matthew. And again, I won't be. Um, I won't be getting rid of my Eureka Masters of Cinema release uh, anytime soon because that's a great release. That is a really great release, and it was a wonderful presentation of it. But uh, maybe going forward, whenever I revisit this film, I will most likely rely on the Criterion Blu-ray here as part of this disc as my default go-to. It's, it's, for me, that good. So I'm very, very impressed with this. And then when it comes to the supplements, uh, as you can see, I have the disc in the machine, and so we have the Blu-ray menu right behind me. And so when you can go down to the menu, and I apologize for the uh, lack of focus. I hope you can forgive me. I'm, I'm a very poor camera operator or, or iPhone camera operator, as you can see, but I'm doing my very best. But if you, put, if you have the disc and you put it into your player, you'll see the uh, menu. And you'll find that it doesn't have a separate menu or separate sub-menu called supplements. But what you'll find is it says movie and then timeline and chapters. And then uh, at the bottom, it says subtitles. But before that, it has two things. One, in italic print, it says scouting in Palestine. And then the second one is a trailer. So if you go here, uh, this is, uh, let's see, uh, Scouting in Palestine. And it says, in 1963, Pasolini traveled to Palestine to find locations for his upcoming film, The Gospel According to Matthew, with a newsreel photographer and a Catholic priest in tow. This documentary overlays Pasolini's sojourn from village to village with his improvised op um uh, observations and commentary. And so we have the actual work itself, uh, and when you press the play button, you can see that. Or 
you have also play outtakes, uh, which is the second option here. And so you have scouting in Palestine, uh, and then, uh, or it says scouting for locations in uh, Palestine. And this is from 1963, and this is totaling approximately 54 minutes, so the, the actual, uh, say, documentary itself. So this is very fascinating because, again, it's a, almost like a, a not, I wouldn't call it a making of because we don't necessarily, uh, this, this is, well, I guess it could be described as being a making of documentary in a certain sense, and also scouting locations, which is part of the title as well. But it's also uh, Pasolini's own way of, of encountering and combating with and grappling with the notion of history and historical past and locations and architecture and art from this historical past, uh, but also taking those notions and confronting the present, I would say. And this is, I think, one of, uh, one of the aspects of Pasolini as an artist and also as a critic as well uh, that we see already displayed in works like Akatone, Mama Roma, and Love Meetings, and, and even now the Gospel According to Matthew, which is grappling with the past in the context of the present. And so we see directly uh, Pasolini's comments, or maybe even, even his critiques, if you will, of modern-day societal living, again, in the context of his knowledge of, of the historical past or the, um, the, the historical uh, culture and the historical past. So uh, this is a very uh, fascinating, multifaceted uh, faceted documentary because it is, on the one hand, a, a kind of making of or progress report in the context of the making of the film, the gospel according to, uh, according to Matthew, in the context of uh, scouting locations, but also it's a type of running dialogue or con commentary uh, with Pasolini uh, and company, but f uh, focusing primarily on Pasolini and his observations and indeed perhaps his critiques of modern living or modern uh, society or culture as he is viewing it, again, as a, a self-acknowledged quote-unquote outsider. Uh, so uh, it is, again, in the line of these supplements, which can be said to be uh, various aspects of the Pasolini philosophy. Here is another uh, documentary that is very much expressing the Pasolini philosophy in a very direct way. And so uh, please check this out if you can. This is uh, Scouting in Palestine, and this is approximately 54 minutes. And then still part of the submenu, we have the play button here, which if you press that, that'll be the actual documentary. And then the second item, line item, is called play outtakes. And when you press this, this is uh, going to take you to approximately three minutes worth of what are described as outtakes or footage, which is, again, uh, could be said to be not necessarily on the periphery, but also um, outtakes or aspects of of certain journeys that are, again, part of the documentary overall, but again, here are expressed in the separate section called outtakes or play outtakes. It's interesting to see how the film medium is used uh, in terms of, say, overlap or overlay of images as well as, uh, say, the capturing or the cinematography aspect of this. It ha does have a newsreel type of quality, which is fascinating, and we do see the people moving. So uh, it's another fascinating uh, um, take here. Um, we have seen these before in previous releases, but it's great that the Criterion Collection uh, has made it available. Plus, we have, going back to the main menu and continuing with the, the supplements discussion, we have the inclusion of a trailer. But in terms of quantity and uh, substance, that is what we have in, in the context of what one might call the supplements as included on disc four uh, of the Pasolini 101 set. And so I think it does maybe... Uh, make one wish, perhaps, or make one yearn for, say, the possibility, or wonder what uh, what the possibilities could have been in terms of including other things uh, with uh, this, uh, as far as supplements are concerned. It would have been great, for instance, to have seen maybe a new commentary track or maybe another new supplement from Criterion. Who knows? Who knows? Um, there's a lot uh, there that uh, is uh, uh, ready and waiting for discussion. Uh, but that actually will bring us to one of the great strengths of the booklet and the James Quant essay, actually. But uh, we'll save that for a few moments for now. But uh, again, uh, considering that uh, the James Quant essay is really wonderful and splendid, uh, it would have been nice, yes, to have seen other new Criterion supplements uh, with regards to this uh, towering uh, masterpiece of a film, The Gospel According to Matthew. So, uh, But again, uh, we do get 
this uh, the documentary and outtakes, uh, and it's a further a furtherance of say the Pasolini philosophy among other things, and then the trailer, and then of course the film itself. So, uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. And so let us now speak about uh, the essay. We will speak about the box art and the cover art design and the box art aesthetics in a separate video. Uh, just for now, note that it is, again, part of the Blu-ray disc, and it is in this hardbound sleeve storage compartment system. The Gospel According to Matthew disc would fall in this sleeve. I just happen to have the disc in the... Uh, in the player right now you can see actually there's also this thing about the discs kind of popping out oh, we'll talk a little bit about this uh, in the separate video discussion but um, uh, but uh, uh, that is how it's stored uh, in terms of the uh, where it falls again it's disc number four uh, but before we end this conversation I do want to point out the brilliance of this booklet again I have sung the praises of this booklet so far uh, very much so and I am a huge fan of this booklet this is fantastic uh, it does have the comprehensive essay which we will talk about in a separate video but it also has separate uh, film critic essays on each of the films uh, that these aren't plot synopses these are actual or I don't want to say actual because plot synopses are also very important so I take that back I apologize it's they um, plot synopses are really great but these aren't plot synopses these are uh, uh, film um, analysis essays and so the gospel according to Matthew starts on page 46 and it's right here uh, James Quant has written this once again this is truly exceptional now, I mentioned earlier that it would have been nice to have seen some uh, other supplements included with uh, the Gospel According to Matthew, Disc 4, uh, because uh, one yearns to know more as much as possible. Well, if you're looking for that information, or if you feel that way, my dear friends, the James Quant write-up is one place to go. It's a brilliant place to go, in fact, if you're looking for this approach uh, and other background information and detail. I mean, he speaks about, for instance, uh, certain details regarding how this project came about in the first place. Uh, the short La Dakota does come to mind, as well as other details here as well, and also the kind of critical reaction to Pasolini endeavoring to make this film uh, prior to and during and even after the film's release. And this is also very fascinating, especially when one considers how Pasolini was perceived in terms of his maybe almost... Um, uh, uh, maybe uh, acerbic uh, critiques of institutionalized religion, etc., in a lot of his writings and his works up to now. So there was some surprise, at least as James Quantor describes it, which is also very fascinating. Also talking about the casting choices and how this has its uh, uh, maybe suggestions in Italian neorealism, um, which, of course, we know that Pasolini has had a kind of love-hate relationship with in terms of the context of his uh, cinematic expressions, um, as well as how uh, faithful this is in terms of a uh, to the biblical text, etc., as well as using various modes of style, which, is, which are also expressed in, say, the various forms of music that are used uh, and the like. Um, and uh, the phrase here, visual pauperism, in terms of a description uh, of this, which I think is also going at the heart of, say, showing the quote-unquote mundane or the ordinary or the masses uh, and using that as the backdrop for telling this tale, which is a very, very important concept. It, it goes all the way back to a kind of similar approach to a film that he made back in 61, which is Akatone. So uh, that comment, I think, helps to bring this film, again, full circle into the context or the contextual uh, significance of this uh, uh, a la Pasolini's uh, cinema career up to now and indeed beyond. Um, so uh, it is a key work. It is a truly, truly key work. And James Quant's essay points out the, the reasons why that is in a brilliant way. So uh, uh, cheers, uh, kudos to James Quant and company for, for uh, just uh, another great uh, great work and very accessible and a wonderful jumping off point for anyone who might be uh, curious and interested in further exploring the works of Pasolini and uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. This is a wonderful place to go, uh, the James Quant write-up on uh, the essay on the Gospel according to Matthew. So bravo, bravo, and indeed bravo indeed because we'll see more of James Quant's writings in uh, when we talk about the later films. So uh, that concludes my, my general thoughts and comments about this exceptional work gospel according to Matthew. It is so important, it's so vital, and it is, it's incredible. It's moving, incredible, clever, uh, unexpected in a lot of places, 
and um, it, it has some surprises, some very clever twists. Uh, I mentioned the application of music, etc., which is uh, one of the examples, I think, of those clever surprises and twists. And it is so sublime and moving. Uh, again, uh, transcendental, I think. It's such an incredibly emotional moving experience in the hands of Pasolini. What, what a film this is. This is the Gospel according to Matthew. All right, my dear friends, so that's it for now. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies, including The Gospel According to Matthew, including the works found in this great set, Pasolini 101 and beyond. So until the next video, my dear, dear friends, stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Thank you.